Hi there, my name is Bella, and welcome or welcome back to the 100 Acre Wool Knitting Podcast, where I talk about all the things I've been making recently, usually having to do with knitting, sewing, or other fiber arts. And today I have a lot of knitting to show you guys, so let's get into it. Okay, so first a couple of announcements. The past couple weeks I worked on a few tutorials for you guys. Um, in my last podcast episode, a lot of people were asking me to do colorwork tutorials. So I started making a colorwork tutorial series for you guys, hopefully to answer some of your questions that you asked in my last podcast episode. So part one of that series is all about color theory and general ideas to think about when picking out your colors for color work, and then part two is how to digitally mock up any pattern so that you can see what the color work will look like before you even start knitting it. So if you're curious about what those are, I will link them up here somewhere and also down below so you can check those out at the end of this video. And then the other announcements is a reminder that we are having a cowl right now. It is the Tudor Roses Cal. So if you're not familiar with Tudor Roses, uh, Tudor Roses is a book that was put out by Alice Starmore. And it's a lot of patterns all around the Tudor era and inspired by the Tudor women. I really love Alice Starmore and her designs and especially the Tudor Roses book. So if you're curious to join that cal, I will link everything below. Um, we have a group on Ravelry for it. And I will also link the book as well if you're not familiar with it. Go check it out and look at the beautiful intricate patterns. So if you're curious about joining the Knit Along, it will be lasting all year long, so you don't have to get started on it right away. But make sure to join the group below if you're curious about it. Also, I am hosting this cow with two other knitting podcasters, Zofia of the Burke Creations podcast and Gabriella of the Merryweather Knitting podcast. So they also have groups. Um, for this cowl, so you can go to Ravelry and join their groups as well. Alright, and with that all said, let's get into the knitting. So the first thing I have to show you guys this week is a work in progress. I have been working on this for quite a few weeks, and if you've been watching the podcast for any amount of time, you've probably seen this project in the works. So I am making this sweater for my mom. A little backstory, if you haven't seen um, previous episodes where I talk about this, my mom really wanted me to make a sweater for her and she found a photo online of a sweater very similar to this um, and she wanted me to make it for her so I've kind of been making up a pattern as I go along knitting this. I'm not following a knitting pattern, um, just kind of <laughs> making it up as I go along and it's coming out very well in my opinion so far. I really like how it's coming out. So what it is is a raglan sweater. So I'm working it top down and so this is the turtleneck and it's got some cables and then um, I've split for the sleeves. I'm very excited about how it's turning out. Um, so hopefully I'm gonna try to get all of this in the shot, but hopefully you can see. So here are the little arm sections here that I split the raglan for and there's the other side there. So um, yeah, I'm working on the body part, body section right now. Um, and so I've been trying this on the entire time as I've been making it. Um, my mom and I are very similar sizes, so I can kind of try it on and know that it will be fitting her as well. So I've been trying it on as I go, and so far it's fitting me very nicely. I'm making it a little bit bigger. Um, she is a little bit bigger around the chest than I am, and I think I'm just sizing up um, not even a whole size for her, but, you know, just a little bit more to make it more comfortable on her. Um, but. I think it's looking very, very nice so far. So last time I talked about this pattern, I was almost about to get to the um, splitting for the for the sleeves here. Uh, so I've done that, and you can see this is kind of one opening, and then this is the other opening. And I tried my best to measure everything to make sure that I had the right stitch count and that I've, that nothing would be too big or too small. Because um, I kind of want the fit of this sweater to be close to the body, but not tight and not loose. So fitted, but not super tight, if that makes sense. So, so far that's working out. Um, but like I said, my mom is a little bit bigger, so I'm hoping it'll fit the same way that it's fitting on me on her as well. <laughs> so hopefully you guys will be able to see the details here. There are some cables coming down 
um, the raglan. So what I did was I increased on either side of the cables here, and then I just measured um, how many stitches I had on the arm openings to make sure they would be the right size, and then also across the chest here, because um, I kind of have it where I'm splitting for the sleeves right about where the full the fullest part of the chest is. So it's been a lot of fun doing all the measurements and figuring figuring out the sizing for this. And I also started doing some waist shaping, or yeah, I guess I'll call it waist shaping. So what I'm doing now, since I've split for the body, or I guess I'm, I'm starting on the body, what I'm doing now is I'm decreasing um, so that the area of the where the chest is is going to be wider than where the waist will be. Um, so it's not just like a straight, hopefully that makes sense. That it's not the the sides of the of the torso area are not just like the same width all the way down. Um, so I'm inc I'm decreasing right now to go in towards the waist, and then I'll increase again towards the bottom to go out towards the hips. So that's what I'm working on right now, and I think I really like the increasing or sorry the decreasing method that I used. Um, it actually looks very nice on the sides, in my opinion. So I like how that's coming out. And if you couldn't tell already, this is mohair yarn. It's not all mohair, but it's got some mohair in it to make it nice and fuzzy and cozy. Um, this is a mix of mohair and alpaca yarn. And together, I think they make maybe a sport weight. I, th I think the alpaca, I'm using Drops Alpaca, and I think the Drops Alpaca is supposed to be like a sport weight, but in my opinion, it's really like a fingering. Um, it doesn't seem thick enough to be a sport weight, so I think together they're probably a sport weight yarn. Um, and I really like how it's working up. Um, the gauge that I have on this is pretty pretty dense, pretty close, but not too dense that it's not drapey, because um, I still wanted the fabric to be flexible and movable. And it has been a few weeks since I talked about this with you guys, since the past couple weeks I was doing tutorials. Um, so I have been working on this project a lot, even though it doesn't look like there's too much, um, you know, knitting that's been done. I mean, I've done it. I've done a good amount, but um, there's been a lot of work on this that has been off of the needles. So let me explain to you what that means. Um, I have been designing the rest of the garment since I'm changing it. Um, the photo, what I'm, what I was going off of for the photo was mostly this top part here. Um, these little cables at the at the turtleneck area. So that's what I was kind of basing it off of there, but for the bottom I wanted it to be different, and also for the, the shaping I wanted it to be different. Um, so that's what I'm working on now. So I've been designing what the bottom will look like, and I'm really, really excited how that's going. So I'm planning on doing some more cable detailing towards the bottom, um, towards the hem area, and also on the cuffs of the arm, but it's going to be different than the top here. So that'll be a surprise when I when I get to that part in the knitting. Um, I'm really excited to show you guys how that's coming out. And to address all of the people who have been asking me, pleading with me to please make a pattern for this, I have decided to do it, to actually make a pattern for this and, um, you know, get test knitters and then put it up on Ravelry for sale. So that's been a really exciting process, getting to design the rest of this and also looking up um, how to actually, you know, grade a pattern and write a pattern. Um, I've been writing everything that I'm doing for this as I go, so I know, so that I know, like, what the pattern is looking like already, but I'm gonna have to grade it still for different sizes. Um, I really want this design to be as size inclusive as possible. I think it'll be a really flattering pattern, like a universally flat flattering pattern, you know, for everyone to wear. Um, so I've been working on, you know, researching how to grade patterns and then also like best practices to follow when writing a pattern to make it as clear and understandable as possible to all knitters. Um, and I think the skill level required for this will not be too high, depending on how I do the hem area cables, but I really don't think it's going to be any more complicated than what's up here. Um, so basically, if you know how to knit and purl and you've probably you should probably have at least a little bit of cabling under your belt before you want to jump into this. But yeah, I think it'll be not a super complicated pattern, um, even for not very experienced knitters. It's also really been like a fun challenge. Um, if you've never made a pattern or if you've never written a pattern before, especially like a sweater pattern where you're going to be doing a lot of different sizes, 
there's like so much math involved. I didn't even realize. Yeah, since I've been doing all the research and, and it's, it's a lot and I still don't even fully understand it, but um, I'm really going to try my best to make this, you know, the best, po pa best possible pattern that I can. Um, if you have any tips on, you know, how to write a pattern or if you've written a pattern before and, you know, if you know of any resources that would be helpful, that would be really, really awesome because I, I, again, I really do want to make this the best I possibly can for you guys. So I'll put a photo up right here of what this is looking like being worn. Again, I am making this for my mom and she's a little bit bigger than me, so I think it will fit a tiny bit tighter on her. Um, that's my that's my envision for the design is that it will be close fitting but not super tight. Um, so it's a little bit bigger on me here than I'm imagining it will be, um, you know, like for the official pattern but it's fitting very nicely and it's really, really soft to wear. It's very comfortable and, and nice and warm, but not too warm. Um, I'm definitely gonna wanna make one of these for myself, size it down a tiny bit and make one of these for myself because it's, it's just so cozy. <laughs> so I think that's all I'll say about this one for today and let me move on to the next project. So the next project I have to show you guys is a half sort of finished object. <laughs> um, it is a pair, so Part one of it is finished. <laughs> it is this little mitten. Um, you probably know this design already if you're a knitter, um, but these are the Underwing Mitts by Erica Hoyser. Hoyser? I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but she has a ton of beautiful, beautiful patterns. Um, so I started on, I've actually started on this pattern a while back. I think I've had it on my needles since I don't know, like maybe two months ago. I talked about it on this channel a while back. I don't even know what episode it was. But um, yeah, it was on my needles for quite some time. And I just got tired of staring at it and, you know, half finished. And I was like, I really need to finish that. Um, I hate leaving a project like partially done or midway done for a while because then I'll like forget my gauge and, you know, maybe forget what I was doing in the pattern. Um, so I didn't like that I was leaving it, you know, to languish for quite a while. Um, so I picked it back up this weekend and just spent all day yesterday, like, finishing it. Um, and I'm really, really happy how it came out. So let me put it on for you guys so you can see what it looks like being worn. So here we go. Oh, I love how it came out. I really, really love the, the color choices that I did. Um, they're definitely my style. If you've, if you've seen anything on this channel, you probably know how much I love purple. <laughs> so, um, the black and the purple is gonna go a lot with a lot of things in my wardrobe. Um, so I used Jameson and Smith, uh, two-ply fingering weight yarn for this. Um, so it's completely Shetland wool, and I don't think it's scratchy at all. I know some people think that Jameson Smith is kind of scratchy, um, I've, I, I don't know if I'm just not sensitive to it or, or what, um, but I really, really like how it feels. Uh, so the colors that I used are 81 charcoal, I think, and then FC21, I think, is the purple, FC21. Um, but yeah, I really, really love this yarn. Um, I'm also using it in my yellow cardigan, which I'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, I really love this pattern. I think it's just so elegant and gorgeous. So um, this is a little moth here at the top. When I was first looking at the pattern and when I first found out about it, I thought it was a little butterfly, which is also cool, but um, yeah, it's actually a moth. And then there's like phases of the moon down here. Hopefully you can see the detail of that. Um, so this was really, really a fun knit. Uh, color work everywhere, even the back. Hopefully you can see the detail of that too. Um, this part actually reminds me of a, of a cell boot pattern that I've seen. So I just, I really had a lot of fun with this. Um, I'm a big fan of color work and, and following those types of patterns. So this was a really, really fun for me to make. Um, so it has some ribbing at the bottom here and then also at the thumb and where the fingers are. And so for the sizing, it only comes in one size. Um, I think she calls it like women's medium or something like that, um, which I think I have pretty small hands because this, I was looking at a bunch of pictures of these online um, on Ravelry to kind of get inspiration and see what other people were making. So I think it fits me a little bit looser than um, 
I saw most most other people. Uh, I'm not sure if that was my gauge or or what. I'm not sure. I thought I was using a pretty. I thought I was doing a pretty tight gauge. But anyways, um, yeah, it's a little bit loose on me. But I'm totally okay with that. Um, I definitely didn't want to cut out any of the pattern because uh, with you know with the moons and everything on the sides here and there's just there's just so many beautiful details. Um, like everywhere on this. I just didn't want to cut anything out to try to make them smaller. So I'm really happy with that how they came out. Yeah, like I said, they're not gonna be tight, so they're probably won't they probably won't be windproof. Um, but I don't know, maybe they'll be like more like fashion mittens, you know, just like warmth is not the main goal of these, probably. So yeah, I had a lot of fun making these. Where I left them last was I think I think maybe about here where I stopped last and then I picked up the rest of it this weekend and finished it in like a day so that was pretty cool it's pretty pretty quick knit um, I was also just like knitting on it the entire day yesterday so <laughs> it went pretty quickly for me but I changed the design a tad bit um, so in the moth area uh, she has I think this area here kind of where the, where all the light parts are in the moth so she actually uses three colors in the original design rather than the two that I did in this one. And how she made the bright parts on her version was she actually um, knits it all black, I think, all, like the moth area. She knits it completely black and then she does a duplicate stitch on top afterwards. Um, and she says that that actually makes the bright parts stand out even more. So I thought that that was pretty cool. But again, I just wanted mine to be kind of simple and um, low-key <laughs> if that makes sense um, but yeah this was a really really fun project to make and the yarn oh my gosh I, I, I can't tell you how much I love Jameson and Smith it's really rustic and there's a lot of colors even though from far away it just looks like black and purple um, close up maybe I'll put a picture here of like what it looks like close up what I'm talking about um, but there's just so many other like hints of other little colors like there's some blue here there's some red, there's some yellow even. So it's just really, really cool yarn, um, which I really appreciate in something this small and something that you'll be able to look at all the time. Um, having gorgeous yarn is, is definitely very fun. <laughs> so I'm not sure when I'm gonna be making the matching pair to this. Um, I have a lot of projects in the works and a lot of projects that I need to start that I promised for people. Um, so I don't know when I'm gonna get to this, but I just wanted to finish this one because it was just, I was scared that I was going to mess it up if I waited too much longer to actually finish it. So I think that's all I'll say about this one for today, and let me get into the next piece of knitting. Okay, so the next knitted object that I have to show you guys today, another work in progress, is the yell cardigan that I'm working on. So let me see if I can show you guys what it's looking like. It's very uh, flippy right now. <laughs> um, and I haven't gotten as much work on this as I wanted to, but again, with my mom's sweater, I was working a lot, a lot on that and doing a lot of research. So that took up a lot of my time. Um, but the Yale cardigan is coming along. And for the people who gave me a lot of wonderful comments on this last time, um, I asked for your opinion on how big this is. And a lot of people responded with a lot of really helpful comments about how I could change my gauge and stuff and how they thought that it kind of looked really big for me. Um, which I will say that I did measure this. So I didn't start over, first off. Um, this is like I kept knitting on what I showed you last time. Um, so I measured it and it is exactly the measurement that the pattern says that it should be. Um, Marie Wallen gives you a this is by Marie Wallen, by the way, if you're not familiar with the yell. So Marie Wallen in the pattern, she gives you a uh, schematic of the measurements of the pattern. So she tells you how wide this one is supposed to be for each size. So I am on track with that. Uh, I think it's just supposed to be really wide. I think it's just a really oversized cardigan, um, which I'm okay with. I That's part of the reason that I really love this design. I think it brings attention to the knitting, um, which I really want in this one, um, rather than, oh, I'm losing stitches. Uh oh, that's okay. Um, rather than, you know, bringing more attention to your figure or, you know, the person wearing it, it brings more attention to the actual knitting, I think. Um, in my opinion, that's what, what, what I noticed from it, which I really like in this 
in this occasion, in this in this particular piece. It's just going to be oversized, and that's okay. Uh, but one thing I am going to say is that, hopefully you can see this, it's kind of flipping on itself. Do you see the bottom here is kind of flipping up? Which, I haven't blocked this at all yet. I haven't steam blocked it or anything. This is just, you know, I just stopped working on this and grabbed it to show you. Uh, this is real life, what real knitting looks like uh, in progress. Um, but yeah, the bottom here is kind of flipping on itself, which I don't want in the final, you know, how it finally comes out. So I'm hoping that that will come out in the blocking, um, that I can kind of stretch it or kind of, you know, block it flat that it won't keep flipping up. Do you see that? It's like, I push it down and just wants to flip back up. So if you've worked on this pattern, um, or if you've had this issue, uh, maybe if you have any tips, that would be good. I also saw on Ravelry that a lot of people were having this issue with their Yale cardigan, that the bottom hem was flipping up like this. Um, so yeah, if you have any tips, let me know. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. Um, if I can, you know, kind of stretch it out or, or get it flat in the blocking, maybe. Um, or if I can rip it out and re-knit it, um, might end up doing that. Um, but if all else fails, then I think I will try the Chanel trick. Um, if you don't know what I'm referring to with that, Chanel in their jackets, they put a chain, they sew a chain on the bottom hem, um, you know, right above the hem, uh, in the inside of their jackets, they sew a chain that will help the jacket lay flat and, you know, stay straight. So I'm thinking if I do something similar where I put either maybe a stiff ribbon or something, you know, in the back, on the back side that it wouldn't be showing on the outside, obviously, but just something that would kind of that I could sew in to force it to be flat, um, I might end up doing that as well. Um, but yeah, I have the first motif finished all the way around. So it's been taking quite a while even just to do this because um, there's a lot of stitches. There's hundreds of stitches on the needles and this is a fingering weight uh, color work cardigan. So it's, it's gonna take a while. Um, I'm okay with that though. But it's been really, really fun to knit on um, so yeah, I am doing all of my own color choices for this. If you haven't seen my past episodes, um, go check out my last one, um, episode 7. I talk about it in, in more detail, and I show you my swatch of, of what my whole color work is going to look like. But yeah, I'm using all of my own color choices for this, um, so it's really, really fun to see it come together in the actual, you know, cardigan, that like this is actually what it's going to be looking like. So yeah, this has been a lot of fun. And I'm going to continue working on it this week and for probably many other weeks to come. So this is the last knitting project that I have to show you today. But I got a few uh, things in the mail this week that are knitting related that are very adorable and I wanted to show you guys. So let me get into that right now. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen one of these things that I'm going to talk about already. Um, but I am so excited. Uh, so this week I ordered a few knitting tools, a few knitting new knitting tools. I just felt like kind of treating myself and I wanted some different knitting tools than I had before. Um, when I first started knitting, I bought a pack of, um, you know, cable needles and uh, like a tape measure and um, darning needles and, you know, all the things that knitters need besides actual knitting needles. I just bought like a really cheap like plastic thing online um, to, to use, you know, because you need those tools sometimes. Um, but I really wanted now getting more into knitting as I'm getting more into knitting. I really wanted more of a cutesy set of, of knitting tools. Um, so that's what I purchased this week. I kind of made my own set of, of tools. So I ordered this box on Etsy. This is a handmade box. Um, very, very cute, very adorable. It's, it's handmade, like I said, um, and it's out of real wood, and I can smell it right now. Oh my goodness. Ooh, it smells so good. Um, I'm not sure if it's cedar or what actual wood this is, but it's it smells really, really nice. Um, so you open it up, and I have all of my little knitting tools in here. So I'll probably put a photo so you can see all of these closer up. Um, but I'll just show you a couple of things that I have in here. So first I have some stitch markers. Um, these I already had actually, but I just 
chucked them in here because I know I'm going to need them. And then I also got some darning needles. So I got these, um, I got a few of these things from uh, Ritual Dyes. I went on their website a couple days ago, and or actually like a week ago, and I saw that they had a knitting tools section, and then I just fell down the rabbit hole. I mean, you know how it is. Um, they had so many cute things, and I just couldn't resist. It was just so adorable. That's actually how the idea of all of this came about, was I saw how many cute knitting tools they had, and I just wanted to make a, a little set for myself. So these are my darning needles now. Um, it comes with a lot of different sizes, um, whether you're working with, um, you know, thinner yarn or thicker yarn, uh, there's a lot of sizes for you to use in this one for weaving in your ends and such, um, and seaming and, you know, whatever else you might need. And then I put my little tape measure in here. Uh, this one I also already had, but, you know, this is also necessary for a little knitting toolkit. And some more stitch markers. And then this has to be my favorite thing in here. These are Seki scissors. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's S-E-K-I. Um, so these are little thread snips. Let me get the top off, top of these off so you can see. So <laughs> this is what they look like. I hope you can actually see these. So these are so tiny and cute. I just, I am obsessed with miniatures and mini things. My entire life, I've just loved minis. Um, so when I saw these, I didn't even know these existed. Like, how can you make scissors so small and actually work? Like, these actually function and they actually, you know, trim your yarn like you needed to. Um, I just thought they were so freaking adorable. I couldn't resist. And then I also got some cable needles for, you know, I love doing cable knitting. Uh, so I got some cable needles. So it came in a pack of three of different sizes and it's made out of bamboo. They're made out of bamboo. Um, so they're really, really beautiful. They're really pretty and I really, really like them. I was actually using them a bit on my mom's sweater because uh, they came in the mail when I was still doing the cables. So I've tried these out and I really, really like how they are so far. Um, they actually are better than my plastic ones. These ones are a lot smoother and it doesn't catch on the yarn. My plastic ones were catching on the yarn all the time and it was, it was very annoying. Um, so I really, really love all of these little tools and uh, they've been a lot of fun to use in the short time that I've had all of them. Um, I know that these are going to last me a long, long time, hopefully forever, because um, you know they're all good materials and well-made um, tools. So I'll link everything below if you're curious um, on what these things are and if you would want to pick one up or pick some up for yourself. Um, I'll link them all below, just like everything in this video. I always link everything below. So yeah, just wanted to share this little cute little thing with you guys. So that is everything for today. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And make sure to like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already so that you never miss any more of my episodes. And make sure to check back for next week's episode where I will show you my progress on these projects and I'm also going to be casting on a new thing. <laughs> so make sure to check that out next week. Um, thanks again for watching and have a lovely rest of your day. Bye-bye.